Hello and welcome to this tutorial video. My name is Alex from Enginetics. Today I'm going to show you how to install Enterprise Command Center or ECC version 4 and integrate it with Oracle eBusiness Suite 12.2. During the demonstration I will be using a post from the Enginetics blog. Please find the link in the video description. There are multiple helpful links listed in the references section. The most important one is this My Oracle Support document, which contains all the installation steps and prerequisites. You will need My Oracle Support account to access this document, download EC installer, and required EBS patches. First, let's review the operating system requirements. ECC can be installed on Oracle Linux or Red Hat version 7. Earlier ECC versions could be installed on Oracle Linux 6, but starting with ECC version 4, Oracle Linux or Red Hat version 7 is the only option. It is recommended to use a standalone server for the ECC installation, though it's possible to perform installation on an EBS application server. But you may hit performance issues in the latter case. Please make sure that the server has a powerful multi-core CPU with at least two cores. If you have a more powerful CPU, please use it. ECC will run faster. Also, ECC resource requirements are changing with new releases, so two cores may be not enough in the future. Uh, we started with a minimal memory assignment of 5 GB, as my Oracle support document recommends. But later, it turned out that ECC is quite memory consuming. A lot of memory is required by ECC data loader, for example. And sometimes, if there is not enough memory, the system uses swap. So, I advise monitoring ECC resource usage for some time and increase memory assignment, if necessary. Now, let's continue with the operating system configuration. If your ECC server is protected with a firewall, certain ports need to be opened so EBS can connect to ECC and vice versa. I will give you an example of creating a new firewall zone using firewall CMD. Here we have two SSH sessions opened, one for ECC and another for EBS application server. Let's start with ECC. This command will create a new zone called ECC zone. Now adding new allowed source address. Uh, that's IP address of the EBS application server. And let's add the ports allowed for that source address. Now we need to reload the firewall to apply the changes. And the following command will show the configuration I have just performed. So here we see the source IP address and the allowed ports. Another port that needs to be opened is a database port on a server hosting the ECC database. I decided to create the ECC schema in the EBS database. So I will ex execute the following command on the EBS database server. And then execute the following command to confirm that the above command worked. The additional entry is displayed for the database port. Now let's move on to the network configuration. 
This step may not be required if you are using DNS. Verify the ECC server hostname by running the hostname command. Create entries in ETC host file for the ECC and EBS servers. So let's open etc host file using vi editor and add the entries to the end of the file. To verify that the new host entries work, you can use ping command. So let's ping etc host. Okay, it's working. And now let's ping the EBS host. It's working too. The next step is to create operating system user and group that will own the ECC installation. I have used Oracle user and oinstall group. Let's create them. For group creation we will use group add command and for the user creation we will use user add command and we'll specify minus g flag to specify the primary group for this user. Download the ECC installer which is delivered as a patch from my Oracle support. The latest patch number can be found in the My Oracle Support document that I have mentioned. I have already downloaded the installer because it is 2 GB of size, so it takes a while to download it. Unzip the patch. While the files are being uncompressed, let's create a directory for the ECC installation. I will create a u01 directory. Later, this directory will be referred as ECC underscore base. Move the BSX files. to the ECC base directory. Let's go to the directory. Add executable permissions to those files. Now execute the installer files. To execute them we need to use the following command that will execute them both. Or you can simply execute them one by one. When those files are executed, uh, they are going to extract the ECC files. And they will create uh, two directories. One directory is called Oracle and it contains Oracle Enterprise Command Center quick install scripts and software. And the other directory is not created yet, but it will be called uh, insta underscore client and it will contain Oracle instant client for database connection. So ECC can connect to a database. So let's wait uh, why installer completes. 
Okay, the first installer file is complete. And the second also. And uh, two directories are created. Okay, so in the first directory, we see uh, several subdirectories. And the second directory contains Oracle instant client files. Certain EBS patches need to be applied before configuring ECC. All patches are listed in the section 4.2 of the My Oracle Support document. They include AD and TXK patches, ATG consolidated patch, adapter patch, and product family consolidated patches. To prepare a list of patches to apply, you have to do the following. First, identify your EBS version to include only relevant patches. A version of EBS has to be 12 to 4 or later. If another document is listed, like for AD and TXK patches, you need to open it. It may contain additional steps or patches to be applied. If it's required to install a patch, first check if this patch is not already applied. You can refer to another Nginx blog post for this information, how to do it. It can be done using Oracle Applications Manager, Database Query, or, of course, Blitz Report. Let's try to check one of the patches in our demo instance. So we are providing patch number, clicking Run, and getting Excel output, showing that this patch is applied. OK, let's move on. If a patch is not applied, click on the patch link. and then click on the readme. Okay, it takes some time. If uh, the readme contains another patches, another prerequisite patches, you need to find them, uh, open the readme and check if they contain prerequisite patches in turn. So it's a recursive process. You need to include all of the patches, including the prerequisites, in the resulting list. So, at the end, it may look like the one in our blog post. Not applied patches are marked with the minus sign. Applied patches are marked with the plus sign. Prerequisite patches are indented. So, for example, those patches are prerequisite patches to this patch. After pre-patch analysis is finished, download all the patches and apply them using ADOP. Please note that my Oracle support document warns against merging between themselves ATG, adapter patch and the product family consolidated patches. So, for example, those commands apply patches that cannot be merged together first and then the rest of the patches, product family consolidated patches and the NLS patches are applied and merged together. Now we are proceeding with configuring the Oracle Enterprise Command Center installation. ECC configuration includes setting up the database, ECC framework and EBS integration. The first step is to configure the database. Navigate to the ECC base Oracle Quick Install directory. 
In our case, ECC base is U01. Open ECC config properties file. We need to edit several mandatory parameters. One of them is EBS middle tier host fully qualified domain name. We need to set it to EBS application server. Uh, EBS middle tier port, in our case, it's 80. Uh, EBS middle tier protocol, we leave it to the default. But if you are using HTTPS, uh, please provide HTTPS. Uh, EBS DB URL should point to EBS database listener. So we leave this part the same. This is EBS database hostname port and service name. Leaving EBS DB username uh, the default. And setting EBS ECC user to developer. Uh, we created developer user for ECC integration. Uh, please uh, provide the value for your environment accordingly. And our time zone is Central European. Uh, the next parameter is ECC DB URL. In this tutorial, for simplicity, it's set to the same value as for EBS database URL. Um, but it's not necessarily the case uh, for your installation. It may be a different uh, database. ECC DB username, we're leaving it to the same value. And ECC hostname is name of the server where ECC is installed. It's ECC local domain. Please save the file and run script create and file.sh. It will not give any output, but it will create environment file. Please apply that environment file. and run script env setup.sh Please choose option 1, database setup. When prompted if uh, the user ECC existing in ECC database, please choose no. System username is system. provide a system password and here we need to provide password for the new ECC database user. Uh, please make sure that uh, it is at least eight characters long. Okay, the script is working. ECC user created successfully. Yeah, everything uh, ran fine. Let's exit. And let's verify connection to the new ECC schema. Okay, 
user is ECC. Everything works, so we can move to the next steps. Now we can move on to ECC configuration. Run the same script, nfsetup.sh. This time choose option 2, install the logic server. This time no prompts. It makes some prerequisite checks. And copying files. Script confirms that it completed successfully and we see no errors. The next step is creating ECC domain. Uh, choose option 3. Please provide the password for ECC database user. And here we need to provide password for the new user, user uh, ECC admin user weblogic. And now it's uh, important to note that this password for weblogic user needs to contain at least eight characters and additionally it uh, has to contain a special character. Uh, if it will not contain special character, the script will fail. Script completed successfully, it produced huge output. Uh, we can review it quickly to ensure that no error happened. Everything seems to be all right. After the logic domain is configured, log in to the ECC admin URL to verify that ECC weblogic servers are running fine. The URL looks like this one. It may be different for your environment, but it uses port 7776. Okay. It's up and running. Let's move on. The next step is to configure the GNDI for EBS. In this step, we need to connect to application EBS application server and go to FNTCQ directory. This directory contains DBC files for connection. To EBS. We need uh, to create new DBC file for ECC using this command that needs to be adjusted according to your settings. Okay, a uh, new DBC file has been created. And now we need to copy it. To ECC server. Uh, 
Okay, it's copied uh, and it has new name, connection.dbc. The next step is to log into EBS server and go to user management responsibility uh, uses function. Uh, we need to add role to uh, the user that uh, we will be using for ECC integration. And here we will have small change, small technical change. Uh, we'll change ECC EBS username from developer to ECC user. After that, we need to create environment file. Recreate it. Okay, uh, let's go to user management uh, responsibility. Users. And let's find our ECC user. I just created it, so it's uh, a new user. And here we need to assign a role. Okay, click it. And let's find it by app schema keywords. Here it is, app schema connect role. Let's select it, uh, add some comments. Click save. And apply. Uh, if you don't assign that role, you may get the following error. Now we are ready to run our configuration script. Choose option 4. Provide and password for our EBS ECC user. And I'll also password for WebLogic admin user. As you see, configuration failed. Uh, but actually it is good, uh, because we can now uh, resolve another possible cause for this error. Uh, you see, it's in the blog post. Uh, this error may happen uh, because hostname uh, is not uh, resolved uh, in a DBC file that we uh, has copied to ECC server. So let's open uh, let's open it. Uh, you see, uh, host name is apps example com, but uh, our EBS server address is uh, r12 to uh, 9a in genetics com. Uh, this happened uh, because uh, during DBC file uh, generation, uh, the utility used uh, internal host name, uh, not uh, the DNS host name. Uh, so we need to add it to etc host file. Or we can change uh, this internal host name to DNS host name.
Let's try to run configuration again. Okay, now you see it's successful. GNDI created for EBS database. After GNDI configuration completed, we need to test it. Uh, let's go to WebLogic admin server console. Um, okay, choose services data sources uh, choose ebsdb connection monitoring testing uh, select data source and click test data source okay test is successful we can go to the next step Uh, choose option 5, integrate ECC with EBS. Proceed with integration, yes please. Provide the necessary passwords, ECC database user, WebLogic user. Okay, and script is running. EBS integration completed successfully. Verifying that there were no errors. Yes, everything went fine. The next step is to edit EBS context variables using Oracle Applications Manager. Uh, please go to Oracle EBS screen uh, and log in as user uh, who has system administrator responsibility assigned. Go to system administrator, Oracle Applications Manager, Auto config. And here click on edit parameters. Edit parameters for applications context file. Uh, the first parameter, first uh, variable we're gonna edit is SECC conf comment. We need to remove hashtag. Uh, choose search by uh, variable uh, name, put name here. Ensure that uh, there is no hashtag here. Uh, if it's present, we need to remove it. Uh, next, set up the following variables. SCCC protocol it's set to HTTP as required. SECC web host. We're gonna edit it and set to ECC local domain. Uh, 
and SECC managed port. It's already correct. Uh, click save the changes. Now please log into Oracle EBS application server and check that changes has been applied to context file. As you see, ECC web host is set to ECC local domain. Uh, port is correct. Also, pl please make sure that uh, ECC hostname is resolved from EBS application server. Uh, if it's not resolved uh, via DNS, you can add an entry into ETC host file. Make sure that ECC server is pingable from EBS application server. Now go to admin scripts home and run autoconfig. After autoconfig completes, we need to check that uh, Oracle HTTP server configuration files contain correct directives. First, we need to identify where to look uh, for ECC configuration file. Uh, for that, we need to check a couple of uh, context file variables. And these context file variables will form the complete path. Go to the directory and open ECC conf file. And make sure that the following settings are present there. Rewrite engine on and that rewrite rules contain the correct server address, ECC local domain. After that, we can restart EBS services. I will use automated scripts for that. And now restart application services back. After EBS application services restart complete, we can move on to next steps. Now we're going to import Enterprise Command Center applications. From the ECC server, copy the following file to the EBS server. On the EBS server, create an empty directory. Run copied file, patch ECC files.pl. It will prompt for an empty directory, so provide the directory that we have just created and apps user password. Uh, 
I'm going to run uh, the script for all languages, so I will provide all. And for all products. Once script finishes, it provides the following report. It shows fail status for languages which are not installed in the system. Overall script completed successfully for languages which are installed in the system, so we can move on to the next step. To load product data to ECC, we need to run ECC Data Loaders Concurrent Programs. They are available from Associated Product Responsibilities. To find those responsibilities, you can use ECC Admin Concurrent Programs Bliss Report. Let's see how it can help us. Its output contains list of all concurrent uh, programs, ECC data loaders, and it also has associated concurrent program short name. We can use that uh, to find responsibility name. For example, uh, let's use receivables con command center data load, short code, and let's run another Blitz report called FND access control. Let's remove username and for concurrent program short name parameter click multiple values checkbox and provide first concurrent program short code. The second concurrent program will be Pebbles command center data load. Uh, report output contains names of the responsibilities which can be used to run payables or receivables command center data load. I'm going to use Receivables Manager responsibility for Receivables Command Center data load. And Payables Manager for Payables Command Center data load. But you can use different, uh, a different responsibility from the list. To assign, assign these responsibilities, please go to Security, User, Define. Find your ECC ABS user and assign new responsibilities. As you see, I also assigned ECC Administrator and ECC Developer to that user, according to 
the previous step. That's an optional step if you need those responsibilities for that user. Now click Save. And now we are ready to log in as ECC EBS user. Find uh, just assigned responsibilities in the list of responsibilities. I will show an example with Payables Manager. Navigation is different for every responsibility. For Payables Manager, it's Payables Manager, Other. Requests, Run. Choose to run single request. And find Payables Command Center data load. Load type should be full load for the first load and can be incremental load for subsequent loads. Let's leave languages blank for all languages and all other parameters to be default. Let's find the request we submitted. Choose requests, all my requests. And you see it's running. It submitted a child concurrent request called ECC run data load. The one child request just completed and another one has just started. We can click auto refresh to monitor the status of those requests. It usually takes some time for full load to complete, but finally request completed successfully. Before we can use ECC, we need to add permissions to responsibilities. To do it, go to User Management Responsibility and navigate to Roles and Role Inheritance page. Find Required Responsibility. And click View in Hierarchy. Then click Add Node. And find associated role to be added by code or name. I will use code for Pables Command Center Access Role. Click Select. now new role is displayed then click update and we need to update associated grant click click update again and in the responsibility field we need to enter our responsibility name Click Apply. But that may not be 
but that may not be enough. I faced an issue. I wasn't able to access command centers before I cleared the EBS cache, so let's do it. Go to Functional Administrator Responsibility, then Call Services, Caching Framework, Global Configuration, and Clear All Cache. After cache is cleared, let's test login to ECC. Choose Payables Manager Responsibility and Payables Command Center. And you see that Payables Command Center is accessible and works. If you need to provide access to multiple ECC command centers, you would probably want to automate this task. I will show you how to do it. On the EBS application server, source the environment file and go to the directory fnd-top bin. Create a file with CSV extension. An example of this file for AP and uh, AR and IAR responsibilities is provided in the blog post. I'm going to show you an example for AR responsibility. Save the file and let's find receivables manager responsibility in the EBS front end. As you see, it doesn't have any roles assigned. Let's run this script. It adds required roles. And now let's re-query our responsibility. As you see, required role is added. And required grants are also created. I have prepared CSV file for all command centers hoping that it will make your configuration task easier. Don't forget to clear cache and you can now use your ECC.